What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be talking about pruning your Minecraft world and or Minecraft server world. So essentially, when you play Minecraft and you run around, you generate a bunch of chunks. This is pretty obvious. And of course, the more you play, the bigger your world save will get. Over many weeks or many months, your server can grow to many gigabytes in size, filling up your PC, slowing it down, etc. And there's one very simple thing that we can do in order to clean it up without losing any of our progress, buildings, etc. We can delete unused or uninhabited chunks really easily using a specific tool. But before we do, if you're looking for a Minecraft server host, I'd highly recommend Apex Hosting. You'll find them linked down below. Currently, there's a Black Friday sale where you get 40% off your first invoice. You can get yourself a powerful Minecraft server set up super quickly with great support, powerful DDoS protection, low latency, automated backups, and much more. All you need to do is click the link in the description down below, get started, choose Minecraft Java or Bedrock or any other game for that matter. Choose your server configuration, order now, and in just a few moments, you should have your own Minecraft server set up. A huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Let's get back to the video. So, on your server, whether it's hosted by Apex Hosting or someone else, yourself, etc., all we need to do to clear up our unwanted chunks and save ourselves a ton of disk space is download a particular tool called MCA Selector. You'll find this linked in the description down below. GitHub is usually a scary place to download things from, but just scroll down until you see these buttons here. Choose Windows Installer, download it by just clicking it, and run the installer once it's done downloading. I'll install for me only, English, accept, next, next, I'll create a shortcut, and finally install. Once it's done downloading and installing, you can open it up and we can get to cleaning out our Minecraft worlds for pretty much any version of Minecraft. Just keep in mind, it's a good idea to save and quit if you're in single player, otherwise save and shut down your server. Inside of this new window, you'll see nothing but blank squares. What we need to do is load in our world here. So I'll go to file followed by open world. In this pop-up, you'll see it takes you straight to C users, your username app.roaming.minecraft saves. This is your single player save folder. Before we do anything, I'd recommend selecting the world you want to prune, Control C and Control V to make a copy of it, backing it up. You can see this one here is around 8 gigs. We're going to save quite a bit of space. The reason we're backing it up is as we delete chunks, if you accidentally delete something important, you have a backup to go back to. Then I'll select my version of the world, select folder, and it'll load. If you're trying to do this on a server, if it's locally hosted, navigate to where it is, and you'll find the world folder right over here. If you want to do this on a server hosted on the internet, such as Apex Hosting, you'll need to download the world folder in its entirety and open that. Then when we're done customizing it, either copy it back to your server folder or upload it back to your server host. Then if you've been to different dimensions, you'll see this pop up. I'll choose Horizons, which is the overworld here, but we also have dimension one for the nether and another one for the end if you've been there. I'll hit OK, and the overworld, in my case, should load in. You can see that I've navigated quite a bit of the world here. Scrolling down to zoom out, holding middle click to zoom around, we'll see this here. So, all of the black chunks are unvisited and ungenerated. The 8 gig world file size is just this location over here. I haven't teleported anywhere else, so there's no more chunks rendered in. Zooming in, you can pretty easily find your base, as it'll stand out like a sore thumb, such as this village over here. You can either manually select chunks by dragging, left click to create a box, or just clicking chunks individually to select them, or right click to remove these. We can zoom out and select much bigger areas at a time. This way we can choose a ton of chunks and delete them really easily. However, I'd recommend a much better way than manually selecting chunks, and that's up here in Tools, you'll find Filter Chunks. When you click this window, this confusing box pops up. By default, it's Inhabited Time, one word, with Inhabited and Time capitalized, under 5 minutes. If we have this set as it is and choose OK, it'll select all of the chunks in our world that we haven't been in for more than 5 minutes. As I use this world for showing off distant horizons, I only really stood in these areas. I flew around the rest of these just to generate them to show in the distant horizons video. Yours will obviously have your base and a few other places selected. For most people, 5 minutes is enough. If you've been in a chunk for 5 minutes, you've likely got something going on there like a base, etc. If you're worried, you can selection, clear, and 
tools filter instead of using under five minutes set this to be 20 seconds as such when we do so and hit ok every chunk that you've been in for fewer than 20 seconds will be highlighted as such so if you placed a stone block here or a post there it'll still be there when we clear our unwanted unused chunks the rest of these we've simply traversed through in at 20 seconds or less meaning we were probably just running from one place to another there's nothing important there now that we've got all of these unused and unwanted chunks selected all we need to do is selection followed by delete selected chunks when we do so and hit ok a ton of chunks will be removed from our server leaving just the important ones that we've inhabited or been in for longer than 20 seconds five minutes etc at this point our world should be taking up a ton less space you don't need to save everything is applied very quickly now if we head back to our worlds folder and check out the file size of both our backup and our pruned world the backup takes around 7.5 gigs and the pruned world takes up about 7.2 so we saved 300 megs here. But as I'm using Distant Horizons inside of the Save folder, followed by Data, we have a Distant Horizons SQLite file. This is where all of the Distant Horizons information is saved, and this takes up a huge amount of space. I'd recommend deleting this file if you have Distant Horizons installed and you've just deleted a bunch of chunks, as this is going to save you a huge amount of file space. If I do this for both my pruned world and the backup, the file size difference between the two goes from just 300 megs down to 20 megs. So we saved a huge amount of space by pruning our unused chunks. Now take this to a much bigger server where more of the world is explored. Yeah, the difference is huge. Now, if I reopen Minecraft, we can load back into our world here. So I'll load into the world that's not our backup. This is the pruned world. And once we're back in, nearby chunks that have been pruned will take quite a bit longer to load in as they need to be regenerated from nothing. So if we happen to build a little house over here and we chose that chunk to be deleted, it'd be regenerated when we load back into our server and travel back into that area like we'd never been here before. That's what it's done to all of the chunks around us that we haven't been in for more than 20 seconds, saving us a ton of space. And as we haven't done anything to them, we just travel through them. When we go past them again, they'll be pretty much exactly the same. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. MCA is a super powerful tool that's going to save you a ton of drive space for both single player and multiplayer server worlds. And if you haven't already, redo the process for both the nether and the end dimension to save yourself even more space there as well. As far as I know, it's compatible with a lot of mods, maybe not all of them, but definitely a lot of them. So you can use this on your modded servers as well. Again, if you're looking for a server host, I'd recommend Apex Hosting. Huge shout out to them for sponsoring this guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.